Get up on the step and concentrate on Him and worship Him. We are all so many times too distracted with everything going on in our life, in the world. We really put too much emphasis on it and not enough emphasis on the Lord Jesus Christ. When he said in his word that if you keep your eyes, keep your mind on me, he said that I'll keep you in perfect peace. He says, stop focusing, blowing up your problems. Amen. Making them larger than your God. Amen. If you focus on them, make them too big, they're going to become bigger than your God. And there's no problem that God can't solve. There's no hell that he can't heal. Amen, amen, amen. So we just need to give him some time, give him some praise today for this little few minutes. 30, 40 minutes. Okay. Just clear your mind and allow the Spirit of God to speak to your heart so he can change you. He's in the process of changing us, conforming us into the image of his son. And if the truth be told, all the time we spend outside of this sanctuary, we're distracted. So when we come in here, let's at least give him our total and undivided attention. At least here today. And I promise you, if you do it, he'll bless you. He'll speak to you. He'll encourage you. He'll inspire you. He'll lift you up. But you got to be open to the Spirit and let Him have His way. Amen. Amen. Let us pray, Father. I come in the mighty name of Jesus today. I come lifting your people to you. Praying, oh God, that you will let your Spirit have His way in this place. Lord, minister today. Heal today. Free today. Lord, let your word go forth as a mighty rush of Lord. And give them hearts, minds, and ears to receive it, that they'll be edified. And you will be glorified. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 I like you. Go to the scripture. You heard read in your hearing. Right to the word of God. Amen. 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 Scripture you heard in your hearing, James 5, 13 through 20. Amen. Amen. What it is. Everybody ready for the word? Yeah. Yeah. Y'all looking at me like yeah. I forgot something. Yeah. <laughs> Did I skip something? No. <laughs> Ain't no visitors though, right? <laughs> Amen. Everybody here is a member of the Solid Rock. Amen. 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 Yes. So James is making something clear to us today what we need to be doing as children of God. And he says here in verse 13, he says, Is any among you afflicted? Mm. Mm. Now, affliction is different from a sickness. You know, a sickness, you can have uh, a coronavirus, you can have a cold, flu, you know, you can have a number of sicknesses, illnesses, you know, that you can take medication for that puts us down. But an affliction is something that is not so much physical, it's more of a spiritual thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I'm reminded of a woman who couldn't stand up straight. You know, when Jesus saw her, she, he said for uh, 18 years, mm -hmm. she was afflicted by the devil. Mm -hmm. And he said she couldn't stand up straight. Mm -hmm. And when he saw her, he called and he touched her and said, woman, thou art loose from thy mm -hmm. affliction. Yes, Lord. She was healed yes. from that moment on. Thank That's you. an affliction. Some of us have affliction. We have some things in our lives that we've been dealing with for years, and it seems like you probably done told yourself you can't get rid of it. Uh, you can't help it. Uh, you keep trying to let it go and give it to God, but it keeps showing back up. Well, yeah. so that's an affliction. And, and he said, if you're afflicted, he said, let them pray. Right. He said, if you're afflicted, pray. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. If any is married, let them sing songs. Yeah. Amen. Okay, we're going to keep going with the scripture. 
If there's any sick among you, let them call for them, right? Of the church and let them pray over him or her, anointing them with all in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. That's what we do every Sunday. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Amen. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. Amen. I want to explain that because a lot of people misunderstand the text. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Okay, go, go to the next one. Confess your faults one to another. Hmm. That don't mean everybody get up and just have a testimony service and tell everybody everything you did. And you talk this. Don't do that. That's not what he's talking about. Because <laughs> some people take your business and try to destroy you. Right? <laughs> he said you find you a prayer partner, somebody you can confide in. Amen. And you confess your faults to them. You confess to them. You, you put it out in the open and let them pray with you. Yeah. Amen. 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 Uh, two or more touching and agreeing. Amen. Uh, that they may be healed. He said, look, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another yes. that you may be healed. Amen. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen. I'm going to stop right there. Then I want to use for a subject today the power of prayer. Amen. I know the power of of prayer. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. The power of prayer. You know, we, I was doing some research and found that only 42% of professed Christians really have a prayer. Uh, the other 60 or so percent only pray when they feel they have a need. Something that they have no control of, uh, like uh, maybe they've been diagnosed with cancer, or, and the doctor said, "I've done it all I can." Then they'll go to God with it, you know, after they've spent all their money and everything. Uh, or you know, someone's sick in the house, or their kids and had an accident, mama, and whatever it is, something that they feel like, "Okay, Lord, now I need you." Now I'm crying, and then usually then you're crying out. But the truth is, you should be crying out to God all the time. Because we're all one aneurysm, one heart attack, one gunshot wound, one coma. We, Anything can happen at any second away from death at all times. So that means we need God all the time. You know, but when we healthy, we feel like we're healthy, you're healthy enough to die. Amen. Because we don't die by age. We don't die by sickness. It's a whole lot of healthy people that's dead. Yes. They had no physical ailments. Right, right. Nothing physical killed them. Nope. Some of them fell off a building, got hit by a car, whatever it is. But they're dead. Yes. We have just as many children's graves yes. as we do elderly people's graves. Amen. So we need to understand that we don't know the day nor the yes. hour, God, yes. that we're going to have to give up the ghost. Yes. We just don't know. So we should be understanding that, Lord, I need you every minute, you know, every second, every hour. I need you, so I'm, 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 I'm praying to you daily. Jesus got up early in the morning, every morning, every morning, went off to a solitary place and prayed to God. Every morning. So if he knew he needed to pray to the Father. Mm. Yeah. Because I had a young man ask me one time, he said, you know, it really doesn't make sense. He said, why pray anyway? He said, the Bible says that God knows what we have need of before we even ask. So what is the point 
of praying. Right. You can give me that, but the Holy Ghost and went on without it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's my message. <laughs> but the Holy Ghost uh, got it, so I'm going to leave it Amen. right where it Amen. is. Amen. So uh, he said, why do we need to pray, Pastor? He said, if he know what we have need of before we even ask. Yeah. I said, we need to pray because God created us yeah. to have a relationship with Amen. him. Amen. Amen. I said, you know what your kids have need of before they ask. Amen. Amen. But they ask you anyway. Oh yes. Right? Amen. Because if they the Bible says you have not. Because you ask not. Because you ask not. Amen. 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 So he commanded us to pray. Uh, our, our memory verses pray without ceasing. Amen. That's not a suggestion from God. Amen. <laughs> if you feel like it, you have time. <laughs> no, he said pray without ceasing. Yes, Lord. And in Philippians 4 and 6. He let us know that prayer is how we communicate with God, how he communicates with us, okay? And how we bring the power of God into our life. He says up here, okay? But like he said, if you have not, you have not, because you have not. But he said, be careful for nothing. Yes. What he's saying is don't worry about nothing. Now, I don't want you getting all stressed out, out of sorts, just all twisted. I don't care what happened. Don't panic. Right. Don't lose it. Right. Especially as a believer because people in the world see you lose it. Yeah. So what difference are they with me? You got the God. Why are they losing it? He said, but in everything, yeah. right, uh -huh. by prayer and supplication, yeah. He said, with thanksgiving, mm -hmm. let your requests be made known unto God. Amen. Mm. He said, the peace of God, yeah. mm -hmm. which passes all understanding, yeah. will guard your heart and your mind Amen. through Christ Jesus. Now, you don't Amen. get that from prayer. He's telling you what to do so you don't lose it. He's telling you what you need to do. He said, give it to me. Yes, yes, yes. Lord. Yes. Pray to me. Mm -hmm. And I'll keep you in perfect peace. Thank you, Jesus. Don't trip out. I don't need you running. The, the government ain't going to fix it. No, look, pray unto me. And the only time it seems that we want to go there is when we have exhausted all other avenues. Amen. With the doctors and saying that, look, they're, 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 they, 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 they're famous for doing this. No doctor, no surgeon, okay, no surgery has ever healed anybody. Amen. Let me say that again. Mm -hmm. People are giving the doctors credit Lord. where the credit goes to God. Amen. Amen. They can commit a surgery. They can do a surgery on you all they want. If God don't guide your hand, Amen. You're not, it's not going to work. Amen. Amen. If God don't say it, it's not going to work. Amen. They always, oh, the, oh, the doctor saved my life. The doctor ain't never saved nobody's life. Because right. trust me, if God say it's time to go, it's time to go. I don't care what the doctor do. Amen. They'll be trying to figure out what happened. Mm -hmm. What happened is God decides yes, who lives yes. and dies. Amen. And that's another reason he wants us to pray. Many of us are sitting here today, you sitting here today on the prayers of your mama, your dad. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, man. Why? Because prayer changes things. Yes. That's the power of prayer. Yes. Amen. And if we be honest with ourselves, we'd have prayed to God to get us out of some impossible situations. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, and yes. now today, we still don't know how he did it. But he did. Yes. Amen. We don't know how he did it. We don't yes. know how the people just came up and gave the money or how the paperwork got mixed up. Enough. We don't know how that happened. Right. But he did. Yes, he did. Yes, Why? Because we prayed Amen. for him. And he promised us that he would do it. Yes, he did. Amen. 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 So James says, if we go back to our text. We go back to James. Amen. He says, so if there's any afflicted, pray. Amen. Don't wait. Don't call the doctor. Don't. 
Listen, we know doctors serve a purpose in this world. Right. We know medicine serves a purpose in this world. Amen. But without prayer, without God, uh -huh. none of this means anything. Amen. Amen. You can take Tylenol until you're blue in the face. Amen. <laughs> if God said it ain't going to heal your headache, it ain't going to. If God, listen, God is the one to determine what ailments we're going to have. Amen. Amen. God will tell you, determine that if you want to get drunk, he won't even let you get drunk. Man, you just be drinking and smoking and can't get out. Amen. I know the body is supposed to get high if I drink and smoke. God said, no, I'm not going to allow you to get high. Amen. Why? Because I'm in control. Amen. Amen. So he says that we need to pray. So most people pray when they feel like they need it. But I'm reminded all through the Bible how the heroes of faith made it through yes. by Prayer oh, yes. and faith and thanksgiving. Amen. They cried out to God. Amen. And in 2 Kings 20, we have the story of Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a praying man. He was a praying king. You know, this was after all the worthless, evil kings. Hezekiah came along. He tore down all the groves that they had put up. Amen. He took out all the uh, idols and everything. He, he walked up right before God. Okay? We're talking about the power. Okay? And what he did was he, 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 he God sent Elijah to him. And in his text it said, in those days Hezekiah was sick unto death. So now here's a man, and what we're talking about, he didn't got sick. He didn't got sick enough to die. Now I know you were sick enough he thought you were going to die. Amen. But he was sick enough to die. Now it's one thing for you to get sick enough to die, you say call the pastor. Right, right. The pastor come up to the hospital. Lord. You got tubes everywhere. And uh, instead of me telling you, look, you know, it's going to be all right. We're going to pray. I'm going to anoint you. We're going to ask God to lift you up out of this sick bed. Mm -hmm. But instead I tell you, listen, Get your house in order. Amen. <laughs> call whoever you need to call. Do you need me to get in touch with somebody? Because you are not coming up out of this hospital. You are getting ready to die. Okay? So says the Lord. So if I come in there telling you that, you're like, get out of here. Your family will have a fit. What is he doing? Get him out of here. No, no, no. She ain't going to die. She ain't getting up. God had already told him. Yeah, right. Told me to tell him. Call whoever. Show him what your insurance papers is. Do everything you need to do. Because you are not getting up out of here. Amen. Said in the prophet, I just, you know, go back. <laughs> Isaiah, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus says the Lord, set thou house in order, for thou shalt die. And not live. Yeah. Now this comes from God. This is God. This is this pastor. This is man. Amen. Amen. Now you ain't ready to die. Nope. Right? You, you believe in God. You got faith in everything, but you ain't ready to die. Amen. <laughs> you don't want to hear that from the pastor. Nope. He gonna say, "Go get somebody else, pastor. Go get Bishop so and so. He'll tell me something I want to hear." <laughs> Amen. Amen. Go ahead. <laughs> then. He turned his face to the wall. Mm. We talk about the power of prayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He turned his face to the wall. Why do you yeah. think he turned yeah. to the wall? See, he was praying to God. Oh, yeah. The prophet was there. And I'm sure there were other people there in the chamber. Mm -hmm. But he said, I'm not talking to you. Mm -hmm. Right, right. I don't want you to think one minute, prophet, uh, Isaiah, that I'm talking to you. Mm -hmm. He turned his back to the, he turned to the wall. Yes, yes, yes. He turned to the wall and prayed unto the Lord. <coughs> and listen to this prayer. Because this is the kind of prayer that we need to be able to pray. Yes. But you can't pray this prayer yes. if you haven't lived like that. Right. Right. right now. Right. Okay? If you do, it ain't going to be the same result. Amen. But he, 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 he turned himself and said, see, see, Lord, 
Remember now how I have walked before thee in truth. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And with a perfect heart. Mm -hmm. He said, I've done everything you told me to do. Yeah. He said, now, and you know my heart. Uh -huh. So I, I can fool them, but I can't fool you. Yeah. He said, and have done that which is good in thy sight. Mm -hmm. And Hezekiah wept. So, go ahead. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, that wasn't no long, drawn-out prayer. Mm -hmm. See, we think we got to use big words and fall down and pray for three hours. No. He just said, look, I've been a man of God. I've done what you commanded me to do. I've, I've served you. I've led your people the way you told me to lead them. And I did it with a pure heart. Yes. I have no ulterior motives. Yes. I did it because you God and I know you God. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, because you know, Isaiah told him what God said, and Isaiah getting out of there. Because see, you go tell the king something like that, he's like a kid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you go tell him oh, you're gonna die and not live. Isaiah told him what he'd be saying. And look, <laughs> probably her up got he halfway in the courtyard now, the Bible said. He trying to get off property because you know, oh, yeah. he can just say, take his head off. He can't come in and tell me I'm going to die. But this is a man of God. Yes. That's a kind of man of God. So he didn't, he didn't blame Isaiah. He didn't talk to him. He didn't say, how you come tell me? He knew it was coming from God. Yes. So he just spoke to God. Yes. A lot of times, people of God, when somebody tells us something we don't want to hear, uh -huh. it's the truth. Amen. You know it's the truth, but you don't want to hear. Right. So you want to kill the messenger. Right. Well, he, uh, Isaiah said, I didn't say it. I'm just telling you what he said. So he didn't blame Isaiah. And it says that uh, Isaiah was gone out into the middle of the courtyard. Mm -hmm. That he said, it came to pass that a four, before he could even get to the middle of the courtyard, that the word of the Lord came to him saying, Turn around. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody asked me some, uh, before, they said, can God change his mind? I said, God can change his mind if he wants. Yeah, right. God can do whatever he wants to do. He, he's God. What do you mean? Can he change his mind? Amen. He said, turn again. And tell Hezekiah, he said, go back. Listen, the captain of my people. Yes. Mm. Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father. And I got I got to touch on this. You know, God is going to be saying David is the apple of his eye yes. from now on. It don't matter that he committed adultery. Yes. It don't matter that he committed covetousness. Right. And it don't yes. matter that he committed murder. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he repented. Yes, he did. And he prayed and asked God mm -hmm. to create in him mm -hmm. a clean heart. Yes. And renew a right spirit within him. Amen. And God did it. Yes. And when he forgave him, it was for good. Yes. He'll yes. never bring it up. He'll never say anything else about it to yes. nobody. Every time he talks about David now, it's going to be like it never happened. Mm -hmm. Lord. Yes. My servant David. Mm -hmm. mm. He said, the God of David thy father. I have heard thy prayer. Come on, power of prayer. Yes. I have seen thy tears. My Lord. Behold. He said, watch what I'm going to do. Because I'm going to heal your body. See, you're sick enough to die. Uh -huh. But you know, ain't no death. <laughs> oh, God. Like it. Death, where is thy sin? <laughs> Grave, where is thy victory? God said, go, 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 go tell him. He said, behold. Oh. I will heal thee. Yes. I will heal thee. Mm -hmm. If you've been healed from cancer, whatever it is, God healed you. Yes. Not the hospital, not the IV, yes. not the doctor. Okay, not the nurses waiting. God healed you. Yes. Yes. And there's plenty of instances that they don't even know how you got up out of that. Yes. They like, oh, look, he's gonna be dead. I don't know what happened. I know some people that's supposed to be dead 20 times. Mm -hmm. And the doctors are scratching their head like, 
Mm. I don't know. We had to go them all. I, you know, I ain't never seen that like this in my life. Mm -hmm. But that's the God we serve. Yes. He said, I seen thy tears, and behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up uh -huh. unto the house of the Lord. Yeah, amen. Keep going. And I will add unto thy days 15 years. He even told him how much time he's going to give. And I will deliver thee in this city out of the hand of the king of his servants. And I will defend this city yeah. for my own sake and for my servants. Praise, Praise the Lord. Mm. Amen. We talking about the power of prayer. Yes. Yeah. Praise the Lord. We pray because we are commanded to pray. We pray because we need God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And if you never ask God for anything. How are you going to receive from the Lord what you've asked him for? Mm -hmm. Nothing. He said you have not because you asked. Yeah. Then when you ask, you ask and miss. Why? Because you asked with the wrong motive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Amen. And he used Elijah in our text. Go back to our text. James 5. When he said in verse 17, Elias, Elijah, a man subject to like passions as we are. Mm -hmm. He said, Elijah is no different than you. He said, he's a man. Mm -hmm. What he did, you can do. Right, right. You just have to have the right spirit, the right heart that he had. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that special about Elijah. He just surrendered himself to God. Mm -hmm. He said, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not for on the earth by the space of three and a half years. Yeah. Amen. Said he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth its fruit. Mm -hmm. Amen. And what he's talking about is when Elijah was dealing with King Ahab. Mm -hmm. King Ahab was one of the most wicked kings, actually the most wicked king, that was a king over Israel. You go to 1 Kings 16, verse 30. It ain't going to be long. The Holy Spirit already said what he needs to say. Amen. Amen. And Ahab, the son of Amorim, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. He was the worst. And it came to pass as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in sin, Jeroboam the son of Nathan, that he took to wife, who was that? Jezebel. Ooh, Jezebel. <laughs> Ooh, you talking about the abomination. The daughter of <laughs> Ethabel, uh, king of the Zidonians, and went and served who? Yeah. Baal. Yeah. He served the devil. He served false gods. And worshipped them. Mm -hmm. And he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal. He, he started building up the altar. See, that's what Hezekiah had told us. Amen. Which he had built in Samaria. Mm -hmm. And Ahab made a grove, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord, yeah. God of Israel, mm -hmm. to anger than all the kings of Israel uh -huh. that was before him. Mm -hmm. said, he was the worst. Amen. But if you go to 1 King 17, what happened was, because he did this, Elijah and the Lord brought a famine on the land. Uh -huh. He didn't just get away with it. And it says, Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Galilee, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain, these years, but according to my word. And that's what he was referring to. Yeah. He said, Elijah shut the heavens up by his word. And God did it. Amen. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying, get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself in the brook shed. That is before joy. And I shall, look, and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. It hasn't dried up yet. 
And I have commanded the ravens uh -huh. <laughs> yes, God. to feed thee there. Well, <laughs> wasn't no food, but the ravens was driving him off some food every day. Come on, come on. Why? Because God commanded. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> We're talking about the power of wow. praise. Amen. 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 And what happened was, after the three and a half years, he told Ahab, he said, get up. Yeah. If you go to 1 Kings 18 and 41, we're talking about the power of prayer. Mm -hmm. Elijah said, Ahab, get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. He said, I hear, I hear some rain. Mm -hmm. Now the sky is clear as day. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up into the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. We talking about praying. See, we ain't talking about blessing your food. Mm -hmm. Half doing it with people looking. Mm -hmm. You ain't do it. You just act like you're blessing. God know. Amen. We're not talking about saying, oh, I laid me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep me. Mm -hmm. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul is dead. Right. We ain't talking about that. No. Because that can become automatic. Yeah. That can come. Yeah. We talking about praying. Yeah. He said effectual, fervent prayer yeah. of a righteous man availeth much. Yeah. Amen. He said the prayer of faith yeah. will save the sick. Amen. Okay. But he told Ahab, he, he got up, he went to my calm, he put his head between his knees, he prayed, and he said to his servant, go up now, look towards the sea. Mm -hmm. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And he said, go again, mm -hmm. seven times. Yes. See, seven is the number of completion. Oh, yes, it is. He told Naaman, dip yourself seven times in the yeah. river, and you'll come up with That six time didn't work. But he went down that seventh time. Yeah. Yeah. Bible said when he came up, yeah. his skin was like baby skin. Yeah. <laughs> he was clean as a baby. Yeah. Yes, Lord. So you got to do it. And when you pray, you got to do it, God. Yeah. See, we come up with all these isms. We, how are we going to do it? You know, I'm going to pray. You know, why in the world? I ain't saying it don't work. Look at He said, Get you a prayer closet. Yeah. Go in and shut the door. I want you to have time with me. Don't, don't start trying to fit me into your messed up life. Amen. See, that's what we try to do. When we act like God got to receive it. God don't got to receive nothing mm. that we do. Amen. We're going to make it convenient for us. He said, well, that ain't what I told you to do. Amen. And you just try to fit me in on your way to work. You try to. All that's good. But it ain't going to suffice. If we don't do what God commanded us to do. Amen. That's, that's extra. Amen. And he said to the servants, go up now. He said, look towards the sea. And he went up and he said, there ain't nothing there. He said, go seven times, 44. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea. He said, like a man's hand. And he said, go up and say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariots and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. He said, they're getting ready to flood. Huh. <laughs> get ready to be a, a flash flood warning. <laughs> so you need to get in your chariots because the mud's going to clog all them wheels up. So you need to get where you're going to go before this rain starts coming. He said, because it's coming. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And it yeah. came to pass in the main while that the heavens was black with clouds. Yeah. You know what that means? And wind, and there was a great rain, and they had rolled and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah. Yeah. And he girded up his loins yeah. and ran before him yeah. to the entrance of Jezreel. You know what that means? He, he, he beat the chariot. <laughs> but he said the hand of the Lord was on Elijah. <laughs> It, that means he turned him into Flash Gordon. 
The Lord put his hand on me. So you get that. Amen. 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 So we so people of God, what I'm trying to tell you is that we go back to our text. We go back to our text. Amen. James 5. Amen. I'm getting ready to close. Because there's a lot of things that we don't understand. We need a prayer life. If you have no prayer life, you have no power. Amen. If you have no prayer life, you have no communication with God. It's not a monologue. It's a dialogue. You need to be talking to him, but you need to be letting him talk back to you. Amen. When, 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 when God went to Solomon in a dream, he went to him in a dream. He said, what would you have me to give you? Amen. He said, what would you have me to give you? And Solomon didn't ask for riches. He didn't ask for power and victory over his enemies. He didn't ask for uh, money and all that. He said, Lord, I need wisdom. Mm -hmm. He said, give me some wisdom and knowledge so I know how to lead your people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what the Lord did? He said, because you didn't ask me for money. Amen. Ain't that something? Yeah. Yeah. He said, because you didn't ask me for money. You go to the second Chronicles 7. I believe it's 7. Amen. And, well, 7 and 10. He had went to him in a dream. He said, give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before thy this people. For who can judge this thy people that is so great? See that? That's that chronicle set. Okay, praise the Lord. It must be first, so worry about it. I just keep preaching. Amen. Amen. But he told him, you can take it down. He told him, he said, I, God said, because you didn't ask me for money. He said, I'm going to make you the wisest man the world ever know ever will, and the richest man. Amen. The world ever know ever will know. Ever known ever will know. And he made him the wisest man. But do you know when Solomon, the wisest man in the world, wrote the book of Proverbs? You know, he made all kind of bad decisions. Did you know that? And he learned from those decisions. Amen. He said everything we do is vanity outside of God. Amen. Amen. So for the Christian, prayer is supposed to be like breathing. You can't do without it. Amen. Amen. We pray because we've been commanded to pray. Amen. We pray to be obedient to God. We pray because God has told us to come to Him. Cast your cares on me. Why? Because I care for you. Amen. That's what He's saying. Amen. So what we need to do as people of God is we need to pray without ceasing. Amen. And we need to make sure that God knows that we know that, Lord, I need you. Not when I think things are out of my control. I need you all the time. All the time. All the time. See, we don't want to wait until we get in trouble. Because, see, God will bring circumstances yes. into our life when we belong to him to take you to your need. Yes. See, I'd rather go down there willfully. Yes. I don't want to have to make me praise mm -hmm. I want to just go on down there. So you don't have to, it won't be that foreign. He said, well, no, it's gonna be, you're going to be used to this because you... You stay on your knees anyway. Amen. Amen. But I, I don't want to have to do that. So what we have to do is stay before the Lord yeah. in prayer. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. And as I close, I want to talk about what Hezekiah did to change everything. Before his sickness, he prayed to God about the Assyrian who was coming to attack him. Uh -huh. And he had received a letter. Right. All this happened, you know, said, when it rains, it pours. All this happened is the, uh, the Syrians was getting ready to wipe them out, and at the same time, he's sick enough to die. Uh -huh. But he received a letter 
And in 2 Kings 19, I get ready to close. It says in verse 14 that Hezekiah received a letter in the hand of the messenger, and he read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. Yes. You see that? He took the letter. He just went up to the altar and he spread it out. Like mm -hmm. I would come up here. Something happened. I got some, some bad report or something. They said, you know, you got cancer and stage five, nothing you can do. And I would come up here and I would lay the letter up on the altar before the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Look. And Hezekiah did what? He prayed. Before the Lord and said, O Lord God of Israel, which dwelleth between the cherubim, thou art the God, even though thou alone of all the kingdoms of the earth and has made heaven and earth. Yes. Lord, bow down your ear to me and hear. He said, open, Lord, your eyes and see and hear the words of Sennacherib, which has sent him to reproach the living God. Of a truth, O Lord, the king of Assyria has destroyed the nations and their lands. He had already bore everybody else out. Mm -hmm. And have cast their gods into the fire. He didn't cast their gods into the fire. All them gods of wood and stone they done made that are not gods. Look what he said. For they were no gods. Amen. But they work the work of man's hand, wood and stone. Therefore they have destroyed them. Amen. Now therefore, O Lord, our God, I beseech thee, save thou us out of his hands that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. Yeah, amen. Then Isaiah, the son of Amos, sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, That which thou hast prayed to me, God talking to him. He said, You prayed it to me. Yes. Amen. Against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, he said, I have heard it. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's one thing 1 John 5 said. He said, we know that if we pray to God, we ask anything, he hear our petition. Yes. Amen. Yes. He going to answer. One way or the other. It's just like a, a child going to his father in pain or whatever it is. The father ain't going to ignore it. He hear it. Amen. And he's going to act. Yes. Yes. He's going to do something. Uh -huh. Amen. If a child comes to you praying and crying out, you're going to do something. Amen. But we talk about the power of prayer. Prayer changes things. I'm closing. Yes, yeah, I'm closing. I'm going to tell you what, what the Lord said about Hezekiah's prayer and what he going to do to the king of Syria and the Syrian army. Because Hezekiah is right. It was impossible. They could not defeat him. Right. If it was not for God. See, God told Moses and he told him, he said, look, you ain't going to have to fight. Amen. He said, I'm fighting your battle. Oh. He said, you ain't going to fight. Just hold your peace. Amen. He said, just be still and know that I'm God. So we can do the same thing. If you're trying to bring us down and do things, you ain't got to worry about it. God said, no, I'm fighting this battle. Amen. Don't worry about it all. Amen. But in 2 Kings 19 and 32, we'll close. 19 32, just I think three verses. The prophet went back to him and he told him, he said, Therefore, thus said the Lord concerning the king of Assyria. You see that? Yeah. He shall not come into this city. Yeah. He said, I know what he said. See, because uh, Sennacherib was telling him, look, we didn't, you know, we didn't kill everybody, all the surrounding cities. He said, I know you, they telling you your God is this and your God. He said, don't believe that. Mm. He said, just go and surrender. Right. You don't have a chance. My Lord. And, and uh, but 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 see when when we when we have those impossible odds, mm -hmm. we have uh, an impossible God. Yes. Amen. Who can do anything? Yes. Yes. See, Lord, the Lord loves it. Yes. See, because He can't really show up and show out yes. unless we have some faith. Yes. See, He yes. can't really do anything. Uh, to show the people that he can do the impossible unless we put him in a position to do it. Amen. See, any time opposition comes, okay, what comes with that opposition is opportunity. Amen. 
See? Yes. See, we're we are in our position, but God said, now this is my opportunity. Come on. So if you show you got some faith, I'll show up and show out. Yeah. The Hebrew yeah. boy, yeah. Daniel yeah. and Elijah. Yeah. They had to do it though for him to show up. Amen. Yeah. So he said he ain't coming in the city. He said, nor shoot an arrow there. He said he ain't going to shoot an arrow in the city. He ain't going to do nothing to the city. I mean, he ain't coming in. Ain't no, an arrow is not even going to gonna come into the city. Okay? Nor come before it with shields, nor cast a bank against it. Say so he ain't going to do nothing. Look, by the way that he came. Come on. Ooh, I love this. He said, by the same shall he return and shall not come into this city, saith the Lord. Look what he's going to do. For I will defend this city to save it for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Okay? Look what he said. And it came to pass, verse 35, that night that the angel of the Lord, yeah. not angels, angels. the angel, yeah. what well, the angel of the Lord, <laughs> went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians a hundred and four score and five thousand. A hundred and forty five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, Behold, they were all dead corpses. Now look what he said. He said when they arose. <laughs> how did they arose and they was dead corpses? The ones that did arise, all they saw was a hundred and forty some thousand corpses. And it, now you know they're walking over people like, what in the world? What is this? Stepping over corpses and, okay. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed <laughs> and went and returned <laughs> at twelve at Nineveh. <laughs> and it came to pass that he was worshiping in the house of Norris, his god, mm -hmm. that Andromeda, the Sharezer, mm, his son smote him, his own son, with the sword. And they escaped into the land of Amarina, and Ashrathod, his son, I don't know why he named him these names, reigned in his stead. Wow. We talking about the power of prayer. Amen. Amen. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man. Obey his mind. But I'm reminded of the prayers of Hannah. Mm -hmm. I'm reminded of the prayers of Esther. Yes. I'm reminded of the prayers of Mary. All, all the effectual, fervent prayer yes. of a righteous person. Yes. Yes. Avail as much. Amen. Because I know my mama was a praying mother. Yes. And I know that I was testing God on every hand. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know it. Trust me. Trust me. I was a bad child. But I know it was her prayers yes. that kept me. Yes. And I'm just for me, she's praying for all the kids. Yes. But she would rock and pray. Mm -hmm. And I know the Lord heard her prayers. Yes. And because he heard her prayers, it changed things. Yes. 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 Thank you, Lord. And the power of God came down yes. and covered me. Thank you. Amen. He wouldn't allow the enemy mm -hmm. to kill me all the times he wanted to. Mm -hmm. Lord blocked it. Yes. Why? Because he heard my mother's prayer. Yes. He saw her tears. Yes. Amen. And he answered her prayer. Amen? Amen. So if you in here today and you don't have a prayer life, I encourage you right now, get one. Take, look, take you five minutes and pray to God. Five minutes and it'll grow. It'll grow. 
But if you don't have a prayer life, you don't have no power of God in your life. Uh -huh. yeah. Because the weapon of choice for the born again believer is yes. prayer. Yes. There is not another, there is not a weapon on earth that is more powerful than prayer. Amen. Nothing. Amen. Nothing can defeat prayer because the prayer is only as powerful as the God that you pray to. Amen. So you got people praying to Confucius and Muhammad and Elijah, all these people. Ain't no power. Amen. But when you pray to the one true and living God, yes. the creator of heaven and earth, the giver and sustainer of life. Then you got some power. So I want to encourage you today. Keep praying without ceasing. Because you're here because of God's grace. And he didn't bring you this far to leave you. He promised he ain't never going to leave you nor forsake you. So pray with confidence, pray with faith. And we know James 1 says, if any man lack wisdom in five, let him ask God who gives it every man liberty. Yeah. And I'm praying that he said, but let him ask in faith. With nothing waiting. Because he that wavers like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind of tongues. He said, let that man, don't let that man think he's going to receive nothing from the Lord. He said, because a double-minded man, is unstable. All woman is unstable in all the ways. So when you pray, when we pray in there, we pray with so much faith we believe it's already been done. I do. Amen. And I'm praying that you do. Because when corporate prayer, all in one accord, one mind, woo, that's right. Say it again, baby. Yeah, yell it out. Yes. <laughs> Amen. So I'm not going to end uh, this message without giving those watching online an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and life and save you. Because if you have not surrendered your life to Christ, He will hear your prayer. Because He heard ours. But He wants to hear the prayer that you want Him to save your soul. So according to Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you confess with your mouth to the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised you from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So just repeat after me, Father God, I'm a sinner. I've sinned against you. I'm sorry for my sin. Forgive me in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe he died on the cross for my sin. And I believe that you raised him from the dead on the third day. I believe according to the Holy Scripture, if I die believing in you, Lord Jesus, in my heart, that you will raise me up from the dead. So Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Holy Spirit, I give you control of my life and I ask that you save my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. According to the word of God, if you repeated that prayer, you meant it in your heart, you've been born again by your good Bible teaching church and made Jesus Christ for his place in your life. You can go to thesolidrockandechurch.org and be glad to help you new life. Give the Lord a hand.